Baby, lay on back and relax. Kick your pretty feet up on my dad. Have you noticed lately that every single country song seems to sound the exact same? Dancing in the kitchen, you singing my favorite song. I'm not talking about the bro country tailgate era that we've had to endure for the past decade. In your four wheel drive. I'm talking about this new wave of mid-tempo songs with these douchey sounding guys kind of talk, sing, rapping over snap tracks. I'm a dirt road in the headlights. I'm a mama's boy. I'm a fist fight. Yeah, snap tracks or clap tracks or drum machine loops or whatever you want to call them. They're everywhere. I know you had a long day. You ain't feeling them downtown lights. I don't know about you. But I never walk up and talk to I know that I'll be a mess Wheels rolling on the no Toyota Twist This has become the dominant beat in country music over the past couple years and you don't have to go very far to find examples. For all the songs in this video, I literally just scrolled over to the country section of iTunes and looked at the top 200 and it was everywhere. Part of this might be due to the mega success of pop crossover hits like Body Like a Back Road Got a girl from the south side Got braids in her hair And Meant to Be I don't mean to be so uptight But holy crap! It is infuriating how many of these copycat tracks there are now And whether they're trying to be fun and flirtatious I'm tired of sleeping on us Get it right or super earnest and sappy. We've been to both Carolinas, seen a big Montana sky. I just rolled my eyes and I said, Daddy, I know. I'm at Craig at a church called Redeeming Grace. It's like he understood my I don't wanna be here face. They have the effect of making every singer that uses this beat sound like some kind of skeezy player licking his lips and walking into a club. Like the kind of dudes that would actually buy a designer bandana they saw advertised in the back of GQ. I mean, this dude is singing about meeting a pastor in church, and he sounds like he's trying to pick him up. I'm at Craig at a church called Redeeming Grace. The sound is so pervasive right now that even Zach Brown has fallen prey to this. Time hero at the bar, burned out high life superstar, you know. Yes, Zach Brown, our favorite beanie wearing, chicken fried country music ally that a few years ago said Luke Bryan's That's My Kind of Night was the worst country song he'd ever heard. And before I move on, I should also say that I'm not just talking about literal snap and clap sounds. There are just as many artists using these canned electronic drum pad beats to achieve the exact same effect. See the entire output of Nashville's latest resident blue-eyed beefcake, Brett Young. I can't count the times I almost said what's on my mind. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that all music that has four beats in a measure is going to emphasize beats two and four, unless you are listening to reggae or white people trying to figure out how to clap in church. But you know, at least those people are having fun. Look at them dancing, smiling, laughing as they're trying to clap along. Country fans, meanwhile, just have to deal with these monotonous, droning, lifeless beats like this. The sound of it is like somehow too edgeless for the Disney Channel. Country music historically is not a very percussive format. There's some debate about when they were allowed, but drums didn't even debut with the Grand Ole Opry until the 1940s. In a friendly kind of way. Country music is about stories. It's about lyrics and actual instruments, musicianship, harmonies, all of which are meant to work together for the sake of great songcraft and storytelling. Look, I'm not someone that thinks country music should never change or evolve, but even evolution requires some connection to the past. But what's happening in country music right now doesn't even draw on any of the traditions of country music. It's just a cheap attempt to sound like pop music. I wanted to test that theory out, so I scrolled over to the pop section of iTunes to see what was kind of trending over there. And sure enough, country music is just doing a way worse version of this. Cause girls like you go around with guys like me. Just when the morning comes and we see what we've become. It's just too bitter for words, don't want to taste it. That's just too bitter for words, don't want to face it. All of these sounds, all of these canned snap track beats are straight out of the top 40. And that unveils for the umpteenth time that Nashville has a massive inferiority complex when it compares itself to Hollywood. And that it's desperate to sound like the music coming out of Hollywood. So high, but too far away to hold me. 
This has also been demonstrated pretty clearly by the fact that Tori Kelly, Demi Lovato, BB Rexa, Pink, and Julia Michaels have all been featured on country songs in the last couple years. That's how you know that the gatekeepers of Nashville have pretty clear intentions to morph the sound of country music into pop music. But at least great pop songs have something else going on in the beat. There's some skittering snare, there's some hi-hats, there's some 808s, there's drops. It keeps the beat somewhat fresh. Trap can get super monotonous, but it's at least got some interesting things happening in the beat. Heard I was living like a bachelor. Woo! But right now in country music, all we're getting are snaps on beats two and four, laid over some simple guitar chords or plinking notes with derivative words from the laundry basket of country lyrics. That's all we're getting, and it's so boring. This feeling that I'm feeling, no, we don't quit. Seriously, it's so boring. Look at these soldiers. They're back from war and they can't even bother to smile because they're so bored. I don't think they're even pushing enough in the pop direction. I mean, if you're gonna bastardize country music, you may as well do it boldly. You may as well go there. That's what Taylor did. And hey, it sounded great. My real issue with this percussive emphasis though, is that it invites people to not listen to the lyrics. It makes the beat and your movement to that beat more important than the actual story. And the storytelling of country music is what drew me and so many other people to it in the first place. Mama sewed the rags together, sewing ever peace with love. She made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. I mean, can you imagine adding snaps to the beginning of Unanswered Prayers? Or if you like put them over Alison Krauss singing Whiskey Lullaby? Rumors flew, but nobody knew how much she blamed herself. It doesn't make it better. All it does is cover up the beautiful guitar work and distract from the narrative of the song. So how do we fix this? Because I'll be honest, it would be boring to go to shows that had no percussion. Well, the first and easiest tip would just be to use real drums. Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about some traditional country timekeeping patterns. Real drums have such a better and more rich texture that communicates actual human life and energy in a recording booth, not just, you know, some beat that was downloaded on a MacBook or a drum pad that was laid into a track. That's part of why someone like Luke Combs is so much more pleasant to listen to than so many of his mainstream counterparts, because he uses real drums. 17, you don't think that much about life, you just live. It's just a nicer sound. And hey, if you're gonna play the drums, maybe play them quieter? The sticks might not be appropriate, it might be too loud. Maybe use broomsticks, maybe use wire brushes, and hey, maybe don't even use drums at all. Just let the instruments create the feeling of percussion. I wanna hold ya, honey, baby, wanna rock ya through the night. Or just grab your guitar and sing a song. Three chords and the truth. That's all you really need in country music. It is true we had no money, but I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors. Of course, all this assumes you are a person that has something to say with your song lyrics and really wants to showcase great songs and great musicianship. And I'm not sure that's really the case on the Kendall assembly line of Music Row. Nashville seems determined to sell its own fans down the river in its quest to become pop music, and lately hell-bent on destroying what makes country music Country music. I don't get that at all. That's not a good long-term play. <laughs> Country music is cool. It's a distinctive American art form, and that's cool. You know, whether or not the pop world considers it that way, whether or not the mainstream media does, country music is cool. And I wish, country music, that you would just believe in yourself. Oh, I believe. Right now, Nashville isn't actually pushing the boundaries that it thinks it is. It's actually eliminating a whole realm of music and familiar sounds from the popular consciousness. 
I don't want fiddles to go away. I don't want wire brushes to go away. I don't want good songwriting to go away. I want them to be preserved. Is that a little bit traditional, a little bit boring? No, it's cool, because that is a part of what country music is. Obviously, I want musicians to do what they want. I want them to make the kind of music that they want to make. But this narrative that we are getting sold right now, that all the boundaries between genres are coming down and that music is getting so much more diverse, it's a lie. Because what's actually happening is that all music's starting to sound the same. And it's boring. It's boring. So don't let this one beat kill country music, please. Thanks so much for checking out the video, you guys. If you like what you see here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You can click the little bell for notifications. Uh, leave me a comment what you think below, and uh, check out some of the other videos if you haven't been here before. My name's Grady, and I listen to country music on this channel, along with whatever else I want to.